करेंगे Hello, good people. Thanks for joining me again. And if you're new to my channel, my name is Anne. Um, I review foreign shows, excellent ones. We don't waste our time here. So I always come and review an excellent show. Today we are reviewing The King, Eternal Monarch. And this is a Korean drama, also known as K-drama. Um, and if you want to join me for future um, shows, like I said, I only review the good ones. Uh, please don't forget to go ahead and subscribe, turn that notification button on, and you should be able to get a notification when I review another excellent foreign show. The King, actually, the concept is very interesting. I love it when they do sci-fi slash futuristic you can tell the way the script was written the writer is very like very uh, thought-provoking the show is actually about the idea of having two worlds happening at the same time so in this show we see the king is from the world of korea with a c and you see it in the show um, and this was like in the past and then we're also being shown um, where they're also showing current world like 2020 and what's very interesting is that these two worlds are happening at the same time it's parallel um, and what was even interesting was the fact that in the other world they someone who looks exactly like you um, like a doppelganger is what they call it, right? Somebody who looks like you, like your twin, but they live in the other world. And then what happens in this show is that the king was, when he was young, his father is attacked by, unfortunately, it was a family member. It was his uncle. So he attacked his own brother because he wanted to take over the power. And what we are shown is the power is related to this bamboo flute thing that that's what gives you the power um, and actually we find out that bamboo allows you to travel between the both worlds I know I mean the concept is really really mind-blowing and really 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 cool um, so when he attacks his brother the king who's a young son um, sees his father being killed and he goes and grabs a sword and um, uh, is trying to almost like trying to protect his father and himself because now the uncle wants to kill his own nephew why because if he lives on he becomes the king so obviously if you're gonna kill the king you also have to kill the heirs which would be the son and as a young boy he grabs the sword and um, he's, as he's trying to protect himself, he breaks the flute. And what happens in the show is that the uncle ends up with one half and then he has the other half. And apparently the only way things work or whoever has the ultimate power has to have both pieces. So you will see in the show where the king always has his whip, which is attached to that half of the flute that he kept. And then the uncle um, who travels to the other world has the other section. And so in the whole show becomes a quest of the, uh, the king now who's grown and now is like knows what his uncle did. He wants to go find him and obviously bring him to justice. And that becomes a really hard quest to do that. Um, as well as the uncle is very evil. And so he is going to the other worlds and really like using people for his own advantage. Um, he would see somebody who's having a hard time and would tell him, well, if you go live in the other world, your life could be so much better. And we see how he does that. However, it comes with a cost. 
And obviously, it's not a K-drama if there's no love. So what happens is when the king goes um, to the uh, other world, which is our world, the 2020 world, he's from the past world. Um, and that's the other thing too. When you travel to the other worlds, you're sent back to that time period. So when he comes to our world, he is in 2020. So let's go ahead and meet the cast of uh, King Eternal Monarch. Um, the lead character who's playing the king is Li Ming Ho. And actually, I've seen him before. The first um, K drama I ever saw him on was, uh, it was called Boys Over Flowers. And it's an old K drama. <laughs> They're actually kind of cheesy. The production was um, not that good. They had his hair like curled, looking like a girl. I was just like, what is going on? So that's the first time I ever saw him. And then the next time I saw him was in The Inheritors. And that was very, very good. Now there is where I felt like, wow, he's an excellent actor. Um, and actually that was um, filmed, some of it was filmed in California. Then the girl um, is Kim Go Yoon. And I actually have seen her. She was in She's in a Trap. Um, she had this beautiful, big red hair. She had it all dyed red and oh, she was so beautiful. Um, that's where I've seen her the first time I ever saw her. Excellent actor. And then the other actor who's playing the uncle of the king who he's going after, like I said, is Lee Jug Jin. Um, I saw him in K2, another excellent show. And actually in that same one, he's also playing a villain. Prime Minister, um, excellent actress, Jag Yu Che. She was really good in this. Um, the other actor that I thought was very good was Wu Do Huan. I actually liked his uh, doppelganger the best because they really showed in one world he's very um, strict serious in the other world he's just a goofball funny guy and it was just nice to see their relationship there um the other person that was in this show that i thought was very good was um kim hyun nam um also excellent actor um i also loved the um the older actors like i really loved kim young oh okay um She's an older, um, she's playing his grandmother and very uh, nurturing. And then his grandfather was Jion Mong Song. Um, just really, really excellent um, actors. They all did an excellent job. All the actors in the show did, really did a good job. But to proceed with the plot, so when he comes to look for his uncle in um, on the new world, which is the 2020 world where she lives, he meets um, her, uh, Kim Go Yoon's character, and she is a police in, uh, officer, almost like an investigator, but a police. Um, and um, they, um, they obviously get to talking and he's saying he's from this different world. And she's like, look, buddy, you have lost it. What are you talking about? What do you mean you're a king from another world? What? And as time goes on, um, as we have shown, is she starts to learn about him and then she starts to believe. And even a couple of times she's able to go travel with him to the other world and clearly is like, what is going on? And what's even crazy is the fact that she sees her doppelganger in the other world. And let's just say, She's not a very good person on the other side of the other world. Um, the one thing I would say was I felt like it, it's, um, it was a good script, but you almost blame the director in how the episodes and the series is presented. I felt like they would leave us on a, a cliffhanger. And then so you're like, oh, what's going to happen now? And then when the next episode would come on, it feels like we would go on a different storyline. And then we're like, wait, 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 whoa, 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 what happened? What happened to that person over there? 
And it wasn't until the middle of the episode where they bring you back, oh, remember where we left you off? This is why we're here. And I think as an audience, it felt, to me, it felt disjointed. I, it almost felt like the, the director um, sit and talk with the writer. Like, I'm, I feel like the production missed something because it makes it hard for a viewer to follow, especially when it's a script that is very um, thought-provoking, that is something that is not something that we have in normal life. Like, we never imagined there's another world going on at the same time. I mean, it could be. But then to show the different worlds, it felt like they did not do a very good job of like, now you're in the past world, his world. And then now you're in 2020. It felt like they dressed like we did. I mean, they had nice car. I mean, I guess they had civilization is what we're trying, we're trying to get. And that it's happening at the same time. They're calling them parallel worlds. But to me, it felt like they didn't do a good job of showing. So that if you're a viewer, if you came on, you'd be like, oh, we're in the past world or the his world. And oh, we're in the 2020 world, our world. That, I felt like they did not do a very good job of that. Um, but the reason why I'm reviewing this show is I still believe it's really, really good. I feel like it had potential to be really, really good. Like crash landing on you. Um, woo, that one was really smooth. This director, I felt like maybe she was trying to do too much, but she lost us. So in conclusion, I would say it's, um, it's an ex excellent show. Um, and once again, like I, I said, is um, a little bit of some disjointment from scene to scene. Um, I blame the director. <laughs> and it's still an excellent, excellent show. Um, I would say you have to keep watching to see how he um, deals with his uncle. Um, obviously with that family feud. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Um, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that next time I'm reviewing another excellent K-drama or foreign show that you do get that notification. Deuces! <laughs>